Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat. Coming up on the show, what you need to know about tonight's lunar eclipse. Victoria celebrates new freedoms and a snowboarding baby. But before we find out what that's about, why don't you hit subscribe? Step outside tonight and you may be lucky enough to see the moon change colour. We're expecting a partial lunar eclipse and it's set to be the longest in almost 600 years. Leela finds out what's going on. So, a lunar eclipse is when Earth passes between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow on the moon. But Kirsten here is the one to talk to about this stuff. So tonight we're going to have a partial lunar eclipse. So it won't be completely full, but having said that, 99% of the surface of the moon will be in Earth's shadow. So, you know, it's close enough. And most of us will be able to check it out. Everyone on the East Coast should have a good show, even across Australia as well. Uh, in the very western side of Australia, you'll get a little bit of the partial lunar eclipse, not the maximum part, unfortunately, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. What can we expect to see here in Australia? Well, for me, in Sydney, clouds, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's no clouds... It will look a blood red colour. Kirsten says the best time to look up is moonrise. That will happen at different times around Australia. And it'll take a while, because the moon's nearly at the farthest point it gets from Earth in its orbit. Tonight's partial lunar eclipse will actually be the longest in almost 600 years. So being further away from Earth, it's in a larger part of the Earth's shadow. So that's why it takes a longer time for this particular lunar eclipse. Are you going to check out the moon even though it's going to be a bit cloudy? I will try! Great news, Victoria. Pretty much all COVID restrictions are now gone. Most of them were scrapped overnight ahead of the state hitting its 90% vaccination target. It means Victorians can go out, dance and have as many people in their homes as they like. For decades, people have been trying to work out the identity of this unknown Australian sailor. He was on board the HMAS Sydney when it sank during a battle in World War II. But now, the mystery's finally been solved. Here's Joe. Today, exactly 80 years after the HMAS Sydney sank, the unknown sailor finally has a name. He's been identified as able seaman Thomas Wellsby Clark, one of the 645 crewmen aboard the HMAS Sydney. It spent a lot of time patrolling the waters around Australia, but on the 19th of November 1941, it was ambushed by a German ship off the coast of Western Australia. The battle was fierce, and in the end, both ships sank. It was the largest loss of life in the Australian Navy's history. All 645 men aboard the HMAS Sydney were killed. Thomas managed to get into a life raft, but died soon after. His body was later found on a beach at Christmas Island, and he was buried as the unknown sailor. Even though the wreckage of the ship was found in 2008, no other remains have ever been found, so finding his identity was important to researchers. They recovered some DNA from his bones and teeth, and spent years matching it and tracking down his family. Today, at the HMAS Sydney 2 Memorial in Geraldton, people gathered to pay tribute to the unknown sailor, able seaman Thomas Wellsby Clark. Now to welcome the weekend, I thought we'd take a look at some feel-good stories. It's time for Wholesome. A new study shows there's such a thing as the perfect hug. Researchers from the UK say time, technique and gender play an important role. Crisscross hugs are more common, but less enjoyable for everyone. Hugs like these, where one person's arms go above and the others underneath, are said to be better. And they need to last at least 10 seconds for peak hug satisfaction. So when we hug somebody, it's sending a signal to that person that we're there for them. Now to one of the biggest honours I reckon you could bestow upon someone, becoming a panda godparent. French soccer player Kylian Mbappe and Chinese Olympic diver Zhang Jiaqi are the proud panda parent helpers. The twin cubs were born at a French zoo earlier this year. Too cute. And finally, the Winter Olympics are coming up, and this baby knows it. An 11-month-old in China's Harbei province has been tearing it up on the slopes after her parents organised a family ski lesson. 
Sadly, I don't think they're gonna quite qualify in time for next year's Olympics, but I'd love to see it. Go, baby, go! Well, that's all from us this week. Have a great weekend. In the meantime, don't forget to hit subscribe. We'll be back again on Monday. You don't wanna miss it.